Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebing. We've got a real treat for you today. We've got an interview with fabric designer and renowned art quilter, Katie Pasquini Massapust. She is a force in the quilting world. She's won many awards for her art quilts. She is also a painter and many of her quilts are inspired by her paintings. And she is normally traveling the world and teaching. And right now she's teaching from her home studio on Zoom like all the rest of us. And and it's a really great, really cool uh, chat. We're gonna take a look at what she's working on right now, how she's quiltifying some painting series that she's working on this year. And we talk about her process, both as an art quilter and also as a fabric designer. Her fabrics uh, that we are talking about in today's video are Dance Moves, and that's produced by Free Spirit. They're based on Katie's paintings. And so we talk about that design process and we feature the collection in this month's Stashing with Stephanie subscription program. That is a subscription program that we run where you get 10 fat quarters every month for $29.99 plus shipping. Plus you get an exclusive pattern, or not exclusive pattern, you get exclusive discounts uh, to save on additional fabrics. We come up with a quilt pattern that you get for free along with your subscription that is inspired by the fabrics and you get access to all of our previous Dashing with Stephanie uh, patterns and that currently is a $252 value that you get for free when you sign up and it's just a lot of really great deals. You also get a discount on my book Fat Quarter Workshop which is packed with even more Stashing with Stephanie patterns that now are only available in the book. So it's a great deal, a ton of freebies, you get cool fabric in your inbox or in your mailbox every month and new patterns in your inbox. So check that out over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. Now let's get on to meeting Katie and learning about her fabulous career as an art quilter. Well, thanks so much for joining me today, Katie. And you're in your studio, it looks like. I am. Thank you for having me. Oh, so what is, what's behind you? What are you working on here? Um, it's a second piece in the new series I'm working on. It's based on um, acrylic painting of mine that I painted really large and then um, I'm making it in fabric as a quilt, but it was too overwhelming. So I broke it into five inch squares. So I just do a little square and then put it together with a little strip in between to make a lattice. And so it's my grid series. So are you, did you paint that on fabric too or print it or how did that work? No, I painted a, a painting on canvas and now I'm translating it with just commercial fabric. Okay. So is that all like applique? Like what techniques are you using in there? Um, turned edge applique, machine stitched down with monofilament thread. That is a tremendous amount of work. They take a while. I'm sure. How many but, quilts do you do a year with that much detail oh, in it? It depends. The, these are, these, this is the second one. Um, it's pretty intense, but you're a quick reward because each little block, each little five inch is quilted and then I do some embroidery on it. And so each little block is finished at a time. So mm -hmm. it's just a different kind of reward. Um, I'm figuring it, this one takes about three months. And so, you know, so I get four of them done a year if I did this all year long, but depends on what I'm working on. And I'm getting a lot more done because I'm not going anywhere. I'm stuck in my box, my studio. <laughs> I have heard that of the folks who are the creative ones in the industry, that this isn't the worst thing for us because it allows us time to actually do the things that, you know, feed our souls. Yes, yes. So when you're conceiving of a project like that, like what is going through your mind of how you'll execute and, you know, how you're gonna find just the right color from your stash? I mean, is that print? Is that mostly solid? Like, what does your stash look like? Mixture. There's a lot of black and white graphics in it. Um, tone on tone, I use a lot of prints, some solids, just whatever matches the, what the paint looks like. And uh, I just, I just, the thought process when I get to this stage is just um, how to do it. I mean, how to pick the, fa picking the fabrics and stuff. It's the, the creative part is mainly in actually doing the original painting that is then translated. So when you used to be, you know, pre-pandemic traveling around, are you just grabbing stuff from all the shops you visit so that you have a, a sure. wide variety to choose from? Yeah, I wish I could, I wish I could, uh, share, um, change the video for me and show you my fabric stash, which is on the other side. But yeah, no, I have uh, more fabric than God allows. I just buy fabric all the time. 
So what are you looking for when you're when you're choosing for your own stash then? Um, tone on tone and different values. I work with a seven value system. So very, very light value one and very, very dark value seven of all the different colors. And I store my fabric that way as well. So I'm looking for, I don't, I'm just looking basically for tone on tones. Things are read as one color. And then I also look for a lot of black and whites um, that I put in, you know, if you can see here, there's black and white checkerboards and different kinds of black and whites that I like to, they're actually in the painting as well, and then put them in the quilt. Um, so I'm always looking for nice graphics. That's why <clears throat> in this line, there's that big circle graphics, which I did so I can cut it up and use it in my paintings. It's a little selfish of the design, but it works great. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I saw someone, one of my staff said that that would look great for on a bag. So she's excited to, yeah. to get yeah. a little bit yeah. for herself. It works really good. Um, some of Laura Heine's, you know, her patterns that are all the collage stuff. I did one of the dancing girl with put the, the circles all in her skirt and it turned out really cute. So for the collection, that's a good transition into that. It's called Dance Moves and it is yeah. named after different types of dances uh, in there. When I was looking at it and then when I was looking at your portfolio on your website, to me it looks like some of your paintings and your art quilts are kind of coming to life in the fabric. So what was kind of your thought process as you were developing that concept? Well, um, this is my second line and there is a third one in the uh, works. Um, they're all based on paintings, um, either watercolor paintings or acrylic paintings. I paint with both acrylic and watercolor. And um, so I just paint and send them in a lot of samples and they pick what they think would make a good line because they know more about that than I do. I just like to paint. So how did you get with Free Spirit to start uh, doing collections? I have been in the industry for a very long time and Debbie Stark, who I knew as Debbie Driscoll many, many, many years ago, who worked with Donna Wilder in the Fairfield Fashion Show and Debbie's moved around in the industry and she, uh, I met them both, saw them again at Houston Quilt Festival and I had a, a canvas bag that I had painted, which is just like what this fabric looks like. And Donna was like, show these to Debbie. And so Debbie just fell in love with this bag. Um, and we started talking and she said, send me paintings. And I started sending her paintings. And so we, we got it together. And um, so uh, I have a third line coming out. So, so far so good. It's fun. What are some of the paintings that this line is based off of? Well, the big graphic one, the black and white graphic, I actually did with pen and ink and a compass and coloring in all the shapes that I came up with. I use a rubber cement um, and a resist pen to draw on watercolor paper and let that dry and then paint over it. So there's quite a few of them that have that. And then you rub away to get the white of the paper back. And um, then the other ones are basically, I'm looking at behind your head to try and remember what I've done. I have a whole fat quarter bundle. There you go. <laughs> They look nice in a I know they look fabulous. This one to me reminded me of your technique where you uh, create an abstract scene of something and then slice it up and put it back together. So that's sort of the grid thing. Yeah, that was done with um, a little uh, sort of almost foam square that I dipped in the watercolor and then placed in position and hoping that the watercolor didn't go on evenly so that you got these different kind of colors and values within each little square. So that one was done with watercolor. This one I think is really pretty too. This one that you called jazz, I believe. That's acrylic. I just painted um, a, a ground. So they, they took, they, and then they can take whatever I send them, whatever color it is, because I painted it in grays mm -hmm. and black, and then they can switch the colors to go with the line, which is like, Super, because then I just, I don't have to think of all the different steps. So I painted um, just with a brush stroke, uh, layers and layers, getting darker as it came forward. So it looks like it's lit behind. And so just, just playing with, I put music on and sort of dance with my brush. A little Jackson Pollock inspiration yeah. going on there. <laughs> yeah. 
This one I really liked. You have it in two colorways. I thought this one was really beautiful, especially I think this color is so underrated. It makes everything else pop. Uh, yeah, the chartreuse, it's a, it's a good neutral, so to speak. Yes. <laughs> um, that was done with acrylic and then I cut up fabric. You know, you can see the black and white squares in there. So I cut those up and put them into the painting and then paint over them so that they look like they're set into the painting. And that's was sort of the catalyst for doing the black and white circles so that now I have that fabric to cut up and put in my paintings. This one, I feel like we have to make big for everyone to really love it. <laughs> I mean, this is just so pretty. It's, it's, it's wild. It's, you know, I mean, it looks good cut up and put in like you have it in the quilt that you guys made. And I did a log cabin with it where black and white was on one side and the colors are on the other side. So it looks good cut up, but it also looks good cutting the motifs and using them. Yeah, it's really a fun piece. It is a really fun piece. This is the one that my staff member wanted to do a bag out of for sure. All right. I like these little pebbly ones. They're really cute. Yeah, those were done with um, a resist pen, sort of like rubber cement, the same sort of idea where I just drew all these little circles and then painted the surface and then you rub the rubber cement off um, and then they switched, so it should have been white, basically really white with this color in it, but they, we, I asked them to switch the white to black. So where the actual resist was, is now the darker colors of both of those, the, the magenta or the black. So they, we can change some of what I do that way too, which is kind of exciting. So do you basically send in your art and then you talk about swapping things out for color and then they handle turning it into a repeat so it can be printed? Yeah, well, I, I have to do the repeat, but um, yeah, we talk back and forth. Um, we usually get together. Um, this next line, we didn't get together, but these first two lines, we'd meet at Houston Quilt Festival or some other uh, conference that we were at. And I would just get all my portfolio out and look at all the paintings and Debbie would pick the ones she was drawn to. And then we don't ever throw anything away because after I paint another ideas, then some of the previous ones might work better with some other things that I paint. So we, I keep all my paintings and uh, yeah, then we decide, okay, do we want to keep it in black and white? Do we want to do what colors? And so that um, sort of frees it up. I really like these too. These are also another one that, that works really big because it's very They're large scale. Yeah, they, give, they add a lot of movement and energy to a piece, whether it's an art quilt or a traditional quilt. And again, cutting it up. And you can see here, there's black circles of fabric that were put into it. Um, so that all happens in the painting. Yeah, it is just really pretty. So this would have been, I mean, what is your mix of like sewing versus painting when you're trying to express yourself creatively? I used to, I used to paint. I was a painter from a little kid, but I... Um, painted a lot. And then I um, took a quilting class and fell in love with that quilted for the longest time. And you and started as a traditional quilter, right? Yeah, I did traditional quilts first. And then I met Michael James. And he like, after a few classes with him, he says, you know, you're an artist. And you technically know how to make a quilt. Why aren't you designing your own quilts? And so that poof, I was gone from there. Um, so I really appreciate what he brought out in me then. Um, and so then then I just started thinking, I'm sorry, I'm tired. I'm miss painting. So I started, I de de developed a um, class where you make a painting and then make it into a quilt. And so now it's, I'm, I, I've been working on this for about three months and I'm putting the binding on today and I'm done. And then next week I'm putting on my paint clothes and I'm painting all week. No quilting, just painting because you can't really mix paint with the fabric because I make a mess. Um, and so then I'll come up with a new new idea to do third in this series. And so then I'll quilt for a while. And then like, I'm really looking forward to getting the binding on and just painting, just, just enjoying. Do you have like sketches that you work off of or you just kind of get to the canvas and see what is moving you at that time? Well, I've been thinking about the next one, what color scheme I want to use and what, you know, I've, I like to use a lot of circles because I like the way the circles contrast with the straight lines of the grid. And so I basically just start painting and see where it leads me. And I, once I get a lot of paint up on, then I start looking at, you know, do, is there good light areas? Is there good dark areas, busy areas, places for the eye to rest, that sort of thing, and start analyzing it once I've got a lot of paint on it. And, you know, I paint a couple hours every day, let it dry and come back. And so I'm always thinking about what 
you know, what's there and what should I do to make it more exciting. So did you go to art school or did you develop this on your own? I'm self-taught. I've just always painted. You talk though, like you've, you've really studied. So you must have done something well, new. Um, after you've done it for, hmm, let's see, 50 years. I hope I sound like I know what I'm talking about. It's I mean, you clearly do. You know, you have to learn how to use the color wheel. And, you know, I've had little classes from when I was a little girl. And then I just have always painted. So it's just, I guess it's just sort of second nature. Did you ever think that this would be your career? <laughs> I knew when, from a little girl I was going to be an artist. I didn't realize it was going to be a quilt artist, but yeah. So you are teaching a lot of classes. Normally you're traveling a lot to teach a lot of art quilting classes. You've got some DVDs. You have many books that you've written. And so how have things changed now that you can't go teach in person? I see you have some online classes that you're doing to sort of jumpstart yeah. people's creativity. Yep. I have, um, I've been doing online um, email based classes for over 10 years where I give, I have two of them, color and composition, where I give an assignment. The student answers that in whatever technique or style that they have, and then send me the image and I critique it and goes back and forth. And then I have a working on series class, which is also email based, meaning they come with an idea of a quilt, say they want to make a uh, they want to do landscape. And so they'll come with their landscape and then we'll discuss back and forth where they want to go from it. Do they want to go abstract? Do they want to stay realistic or whatever? And so I've been doing those for quite a few years, but I just started a visual, virtual, whatever, Zoom-based um, class called Jumpstarting Your Creativity, which was one of my four-day work, five-day workshops that I did traveling, but I've made it so it's one day a month so each day of the workshop has a month the beginning of the month i do a demo just like i would do if i was there in class with them but they're just watching me and um, then they send their pieces in and i uh, make a powerpoint of them to show the group the next time and so that's been kind of fun i'm probably only going to do it twice this one that's running now june to um june or no February, March, April, and May. And then I'm going to do one July, August, September, October. And I hopefully by October, we'll be back to teaching and traveling. So I'm going to do two of these classes and they're really fun and people have been enjoying them. It's just figuring out how to record and get the Zoom right and put it on YouTube so they can watch it again. But it's, it's, it's a, quite a learning curve, but I'm enjoying it. I think everybody has had to try to figure out different ways to do things this year. Yeah. So if people want to get in on the next one, what's the best way for them to know when sign-ups open? Or are they open already? Oh, you can sign up now. In fact, I've got a couple of people because I can only take 100 people. And I've got 75 in the group I'm doing now. Um, so there's not, it's not an individual class. I'm not, they're not getting individual attention from me. Um, but people are signing up for the July one. It'll start, I'm, I'm thinking of doing it on a weekend. This one's going on Mondays right now. So I'm thinking of doing a Saturday one. Um, and that might open it up to people who work, who can get out and work. And it'll start in July, the 1st of July. And, but you can sign up anytime you want. You just go to my website, which is kdpm.com. And there's a online classes and you can just fill out the form or, or send me an email and I'll set them up. That sounds really fun. I was looking at your preview video and and it just looks really, really fun. It looks like you're just working in small sample sizes, like sample like pieces anyway. We do a little 12 inch. This is the this is if you look at the quilt, um, the two little pieces there, that's abstracting. The next the let next the second session is on abstracting a photograph and one is close to reality and then the second there's two to the session um, is going even more abstract using geometric shapes. So we're just where I just work in 12 inch format, but sometimes those little 12 inches turn out so awesome that I also show how to enlarge that for a full size art quilt. So when you're planning to take a photograph or a painting that you've done and quiltify it, like what are your first steps? This just sounds like to me to be able to have and I have a stash too, but like to have the biggest stash, stash to be able to match color, you know, that just seems really overwhelming to me. So how do you break that down and make it easy for folks? Uh, you know, the first thing is, is to find a good composition and something worthy of making into a quilt because it's not quick and easy. Um, 
So cropping and getting a good, good idea, a good image to start with, like whether it's a painting or a photograph. And then I draw it, I draw a line drawing, sort of a cartoon of it um, with lay like, acetate on it and draw all the shapes that I want to use that are from that picture and then get that enlarged to full size. So I have a template for everything. And then I just look at the picture and find a fabric that'll work. And um, I use Sulky Totally Stable as a foundation to hold everything in place until I stitch it down and then. And you use, uh, you said needle turn applique? Um, it's, I turn my pattern, my enlargement that I get made, I get, I spray glue it to poster board so I can cut that up and I have a stiff template for everything. And then I spray starch the fabric, you know, cut it out a little bit bigger than the template, spray starch the fabric. And with a stiletto and a hot iron, I turn the edge over the poster board pattern. And so that turns my edges. And then I um, put those all in place. And then with the free motion zigzag and monofilament thread, I stitch it down to the stabilizer. That was the way I was first taught to do it too. But the stiletto is, is new to me because I've just burned fingertips a lot. Oh yeah, yeah, that keeps you from burning your fingers because you hold it and it, you know, you keep your fingers out of the way. So. Yes, that sounds very helpful. <laughs> that sounds, it just looks so beautiful. Like when I'm looking at your quilts on your, I mean, you've won, you've won awards and been honored many times for your art quilts, but it just looks like paintings. And I'm always in awe of that because it's so different from what I do every day. And right. it's just, you know, it's a whole nother level of quilting. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So anything else going on that we need to know about? Well, I do um, run a art quilt retreat in Gateway, Colorado every year, every April. And we didn't get to have it last year. We moved it to July and we didn't get to have that. And so we just canceled last year. This year, it's supposed to be in April. It's every year in April. Um, and we moved it to November. So hopefully by November, we'll be able to have it. It's in Gateway, Colorado. It's a beautiful uh, resort. And we have just four teachers, 15 in each class and for five days. It's just really wonderful. And, and that it's called Allegre. A-L-E-G-R-E -E, retreat means, ha Allegre means happy in Spanish. So Allegre retreat, and you can find that on the website if you're interested. Do people just come with like a carry-on stuff full of potential fabrics to use? Oh yeah, and then we have a little quilt shop that comes from um, Grand Junction and sets up for us. So we, we have our little shopping experience as everybody likes. And yeah, they, they sign up for one teacher for five days and get a materials list and bring all their stuff or ship it there, whichever. And uh, it's just a, it's a wonderful retreat. One year on the way back from Quilt Market, I had packed my carry-on full of things from Sample Spree and I got mm. bag checked because they saw the x-ray and were like, what on earth do you have in here? And the guy is like checking and looking at it and looking at me like I'm the craziest person in the world. <laughs> But, but we know, we know that yeah, it's we, not. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, yeah. Well, I will let you get back to your quilt so you can get that binding on and then you can get your, your paint clothes out and start getting messy with paint. Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking some time out. And hopefully everyone else will love your fabric as much as we do. Okay, super. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching our interview with Katie Pasquini Massapust. She is the designer of Dance Moves, which you see behind me and in the quilt. And that's from Free Spirit Fabrics. It's her second collection with it. And it is our featured collection for this month's Stashing with Stephanie program. If you haven't heard about it before, it is a subscription program that we run where you get 10 pack quarters for $29.99 a month plus shipping. Then you get exclusive discounts and first dibs on getting additional fabric so you can get enough to make the quilt that we designed to go be inspired by each month's fabric collection. And then you also get exclusive discounts on my book, Fat Quarter Workshop, which has a lot more Fat Quarter friendly patterns. And you get access to all of our current Stash with Stephanie patterns that are available on our website, shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. Right now, that's a $252 value that you get when you join. 
All right, so check that out. We've got a new fabric collection coming out next month. As I'm filming this, we still have a decent amount of the kits left, uh, so you can get everything you need to make this quilt kit. If you are joining Stashing with Stephanie this month because you saw this video and you're like, I want in on that, uh, this is not the first bundle you would get. That is already shipped out. Our members already have that. So your next bundle is gonna be coming in mid-March, mid not mid-May, mid-March, and it's gonna feature a different collection. It's very springy. It's gonna lift everybody's spirits. But uh, this one here, if you wanna get it and you are joining now, you need to get the full kit, not the Stash with Stephanie finishing kit because that's for current members, the full kit. And that will get you everything you need in order to make this quilt if you love it at home and you wanna have some fun with these fabrics. Thanks so much for following along and until next week, happy quilting.